right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. If we sound a little hoarse and maybe look like a couple of horses, um, we were up to like 2 a.m. at parties. Yeah, don't remind me. We went to a party for a really cool company named Cut, but we also went to a party for Rolling Stone Mm -hmm. that was honoring Drew as one of the creators in the issue. Um, and I had to start off the episode with that because it was literally the coolest thing ever. Um, <laughs> getting to go to that party, not getting to go to the party, but getting to go to a party that's like honoring her and so many other people that yeah. people love on the app. So that was pretty surreal. This is last like, night. we're not even getting paid to do this, but if you want to get Drew and other really cool creators in a fucking magazine, mm-hmm. go. To, we found ours at Barnes and Noble, and it's the one that has Mr. Beast, who, if you don't know who that is, it's a white man and he's laying in a pile of money. Mm-hmm. And Drew and so many other really cool, like, Le- what's his name? Leo Gonzalez. He's in it. Um, Miguel's in it. Like, there's a bunch of really cute people yeah. in there, so make sure you check it out, okay? Yeah. Had to promo it. It's very, very exciting. Very okay? exciting. So, because of the Rolling Stone party and 800 other events that Drew is going to this weekend, <laughs> we've been caught behind the eight ball, if that's what the people say. Yeah. Um, Technically, we're not. We just forgot to submit another thing. We forgot to ask you guys. So, for next week's episode, we're going to send, I'm going to send it out today so i don't fucking forget yeah but i'm gonna ask what what did you say it's like celebrity hot takes yeah what are your polarizing <clears throat> opinions or yeah what are your like i would say celebrity hot takes okay so like it's you, more all like what's an example like do you have one like if someone that i don't believe in this this isn't me but i'm saying like harry styles is overrated like oh, something, okay, something okay, like okay. that yeah something like that something that we can all like we can sink our teeth into. Yeah, but that's we're not going to do like misogynistic ones or racist ones. So when people go, yeah, nothing, Kim Kardashian has no talent. Yeah, okay. like nothing, <laughs> nothing triggering, nothing like extremely polarizing, in that sense. Yeah, in like an offensive sense. Yeah, in in like a silly, goofy, funny sense. Yeah, like that's just one. That's an example. Like something. Oh, uh, like oh, like Jack Harlow is like really. Of, I find like, him attractive. Yeah. Yeah. Like p- people are really polarizing about Jack Harlow. Yeah. Like, that's whether a good or not one. Yeah. He's like a good rapper and whether or not he's attractive. Yeah. Same with like Chris Evans. That's, like, that's the most conventionally attractive person in the world. I know. But remember like when I was on my show and we talked to Dom, I was like, prove it. Date, date a brown girl. Yeah. You know well, I mean? yeah. Like, I mean, that's stuff different. like that. Like yeah. I'm just saying like, those are like things that we can all like laugh and giggle about. Yeah. Um, and it's not that you're not like, I think he's a terrible person. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Stuff like that. Or like Timothy Chalamet, like is like secretly a a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like who he plays in movies is not who he is in real life. life. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. Got Mm -hmm. it. So look out for that link friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for this episode, because we forgot to submit that question to y'all, we're going to do some more of your advice questions because we still keep getting them in, even though we did the advice episodes a million years ago or what feels like a million years ago. Yeah. Okay. So our first question comes from Melissa and she said, I think you already did an episode on this, but how do you stop overthinking, taking things so seriously and how to build conflict? Sorry. And how to confront conflict without Mm -hmm. feeling so stupid. Uh, well, it really just depends. It depends on what you're like in which avenue you're addressing this. So like a confronting stuff or like taking things seriously. Are you talking like jokes? You know what yeah. I mean? Like people making fun of you or are you talking like serious things? Well, it says conflict. So I would think it'd be relatively serious, right? Yeah. But she said not to take things too seriously. Yeah. Well, I guess I could apply to like, ser- like conflict yeah. because then it would be like someone attacking you and like taking it personally. Yeah. Is that what you mean? I mean, I would just, we've learned this actually through our parents uh, and the business that they have. But like if someone is critical or like critiquing your life or being very like confrontational with you for no reason. Right. Mm. And they're giving you unsolicited advice. Mm. You should look at that person and ask yourself, are they living the life that I want? Yeah. No, then I'm not going to take advice from this person. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to receive or absorb any of their projection or or criticism because it doesn't mean anything to me because I don't want to live like that person. Yeah. So their words are worth nothing to me. Mm -hmm. So like also, but if you're talking in the sense of jokes, that's going to take some time to not take things too seriously. Yeah. But it's good. It's a good thing if you don't, because then nothing can really hurt you. Yeah. Like us. (laughs) I know. 
I also noticed too that she said how to stop overthinking. When you figure that out, Melissa, <laughs> you let me know. You let us know. I can't help you there. <laughs> I think overthinking, because uh, I tend to overthink a lot. Like I think both of us are very bad overthinkers. No, I yeah. think I'm worse than you. No. You think we're the same? Mm-hmm. I think it's just in different ways. Yeah. Like my overthinking. Go ahead. Yeah. What's yours? My overthinking is like the world is falling around me. Yes. Yours is like. Everyone hates me. Yeah. 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 So that's what I was going to say. Oh, I know. You all hate me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's literally me. Yeah. No, literally that's, that's the difference between our No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And you know what that is? Anxiety. Yeah. Just manifests in different ways, (laughs) honestly. But like, that's why I don't give a fuck if people don't like me, but I do care. If, if the world's falling if around. The, if, like, my plans aren't going to so work out. So how do you out. navigate that? Like, that's some good advice right there. Um, when you feel like that. Because I feel like yesterday kind of felt like that at certain points. And it was just because. Yeah, I feel like that today. It was just. Really- um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how I navigate it is I talk to other people. Sure. Yeah. So, like, I communicate my anxiety to them. Like, what I'm worried about. That kind of stuff. I communicate yeah. that to someone who is a third party objective. So obviously they all are cause it's me and my own brain. Mm-hmm. So I'll talk to someone else like you or my boyfriend or my mom. Right. And I'll like communicate to them how I'm feeling. And then they'll, they'll validate me Yeah, and they'll say, I understand why you feel that way, but I don't think you need to be worried because blah, blah, blah. Yeah. XYZ. That's what they do for me every single time. So same thing with you when you're feeling. Yeah. Like mine, anxious. I mean, mine has helped, what has helped me so much with my, um, navigating, everyone hates me or thinks I'm stupid or, or annoying mm-hmm. is um therapy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My therapist, one of the biggest things we worked on was um irrational thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. she's like, yeah. she's like, like one's like, I'm ugly. That's like something I always think. Yeah. Jason and has she's the like, most irrational. She's like, who thinking. told you that? And then I go, no. Exactly. I've been so telling like, Jason that it's forever. Like, she's like, oh, like I, I'll look up. I can't remember what the worksheet. She gave me fucking homework to do. So I had to write down all my irrational thoughts. And as I'm writing them, I feel fuck, so fucking stupid. Yeah, like, because none of them are real. They're yeah. just a manifestation yeah. of your own anxiety being mm-hmm. mean to yourself. Like, yeah. But see, instead of being mean and me projecting that onto everyone else. She internalizes it. I just it. literally destroy the inside of my yeah, body. That's with it. It's like she internalizes <laughs> it, which is different. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying like it's the coping mechanism is much different than I think other people. Yeah. Like for me, I internalize it too. So yeah. that's how I get myself sick. Yeah. So in a nutshell, Melissa, I think to help you stop overthinking is to take a bigger look at what you're thinking about and seeing if it really looks the way that you think it looks. Mm-hmm. Taking things so seriously. I think everyone takes their life way too seriously. I mean, we saw that at the party last night. People be taking this stuff way too seriously. I'm yeah. just trying to have fun. Yeah, literally. Life is too short to overthink and take things so seriously. And then how to navigate conflict without feeling stupid. I think prioritizing how you feel mm-hmm. in a way that doesn't like not hurt, care about the other person. others. Yeah. Yeah. Or invalidate others. Yeah. Yeah. I would also say too, like a perfect example of me and Dason working in tandem with like, cause our anxieties manifest very differently, but I think that's why we work so well together mm-hmm. because we're able to help each other yeah. when we need it. Yeah. So, so we went to the party yesterday. <laughs> no, 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 not oh, that one. Oh, okay. I was saying like when we left Rolling Stone mm-hmm. last night, Dason was kind of drunk. So she was like being silly. But, like, <laughs> leaving that party, like, it was someone literally described it as, like, the Titanic because <laughs> trying to get on the, the vans to go back, like, they took you on these little shuttles or whatever. So we were waiting, and, I, and this fucking dumbass told me, like, I was about to get in the car. Well, who, me? Yeah, you, oh, dumbass. No. <laughs> we were about to get in the car. and we're she like was like, Manny and them, too. Yeah, I was going with Manny and all of them, and they were. <laughs> she was like, no, Drew, that car's, like, for celebrities. I'm all... I bitch what the fuck are you talking about I was like normal ass people are in there and then we literally missed it and we missed three more cars after that because people were bum rushing the doors <laughs> and then she was standing there being silly I was like Dace I need you to pull it together I literally told her Dace pull it together and then she stopped tell him who was in the car Thundercat was in the car yeah I was like I'm not getting in okay, the car okay so everybody else got in there who gives a fuck <laughs> I didn't even know that was him and he didn't seem to care so it's not like he was like everybody get out of this van <laughs> that was funny dude. he didn't care so that's why I was like I didn't see him and I didn't know that that was him obviously but I also didn't see him once I saw him I was like okay yeah that's for sure him but anyways Dason goes <laughs> Dason stops being silly because I told her pull it together bitch because <laughs> we have to get in a van and then she goes <laughs> I got to stop talking because Drew thinks I'm being annoying. 
I never said that. Like, That's like, and I literally turn around and I go, I don't think you're being annoying. I just need you to shut your trap so we can get on a van. And she was like, okay. And that's it. Like, you see how the anxiety, it, like, it flips almost instantly. And then I'm like, I have to tell her, that's not what I think. I don't mm-hmm. think that about you. I don't think you're being annoying. I think you need to shut your <laughs> face so we can get on a van. That's different. No, and then us going to the party, Drew was stressed because we left late, like, to get yeah. to the first one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I was telling your dog, you're the guest. If you're a guest. Like, I think it'll be fine. And she's yeah. like, okay. And then we turn the yeah. air on and then we're laughing. So, yeah, exactly. See what I mean? Sides of yeah. Point, yeah. Those are, yeah. That's how you got to you uh, got to surround yourself with people who can help you in those moments because you can't help it that your brain acts like that or you feel that way. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way, but it always, I think, helps you to um, see it from another perspective mm-hmm. um, when someone else helps you mm-hmm. and validates you and doesn't yeah, make you feel stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree. And then they can show you the other side of what's really happening. So I told her, you probably, exactly. I'm sorry you hate me was basically what I was telling her last night. And she's like, <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said, pull it together. We got to get on the van. That's yeah, <laughs> exactly. Easy yes. peasy. You got to smack those thoughts away, like immediately. I have no problem smacking them back. <laughs> okay. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick break for a little ad moment. So this one's another ad for our friends at Newly. So I love Newly. It's super easy to use online. It's a subscription clothing rental service for only $88 a month. And you get to choose six styles of your choice. I chose like different pants I've always wanted to try. I got a couple of dresses because I have some events coming up that I'm so excited about, but I don't want to buy dresses for. Um, so this was the perfect opportunity for that. You have access to thousands of styles from more than 300 different brands. Anything from, like I said, to party dresses to denim and one of a kind vintage pieces. They also stock styles, you guys, in a range of sizes from petite to plus sizes up to 5X, as well as maternity. And they carry labels like for love and lemons, love shack fancy. Lisa says goth, free people anthropology and more all of the shipping is fast and free and returns are done through professional cleaning and newly state-of-the-art laundering facility so you don't have to wash the clothes on your own and you have the option to buy what you love at a discount sometimes up to 70 percent off so um they actually have their summer wardrobe coming up which i'm super excited about so they have everything you need to bring your closet up to speed for the new season you can get a new dress for every summer event say yes to all the summer trends y2k throwback sets checker print crochet without feeling the fast fashion ick and you get all the warm weather fashion you need while you need it then let newly worry about where it could start fall through spring dream closet unlocked and it's super fun so newly is designed to give you everything you need to get inspired to get creative and explore your style so you can check out new trends silhouettes and sizes without any commitment for your closet of only more than once impulse purchases and buyer's remorse by renting instead And they also carry maternity and post-maternity styles. So they carry things you need to get from just pop to postpartum in style. Newly's maternity and maternity friendly pieces from labels like Ingrid and Isabel and Hutch offer thoughtfully designed features like nursing and pumping friendly necklines and patented supportive and cooling technology. All right, guys, so Newly is already a great value of $88 a month for any six styles, but right now you can get $10 off your first month of Newly when you sign up with the code 2IdiotGirls10. Just go to N-U-U-L-Y dot com, that's Newly with two U's, and enter the code 2IdiotGirls10 and sign up to get $10 off your first month. That's N-U-U-L-Y dot com, Newly with two U's, with code 2IdiotGirls10. Newly subscription clothing rental will change your clothes. Now back to the episode. Okay. So this one's from someone named Angel and she said, she's struggling with taking care of my family, my husband, and still taking care of myself. How do I keep my identity while still being all of these things? My family has old school Mexican values. So taking care of my family is something that's been instilled on me and I take pride in. I want to ensure my marriage stays happy and healthy without overwhelming him with family issues. Mm. Well, first off, if it's someone you're married to, then it shouldn't be a burden to talk to him about your family issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I get not wanting to burden him, but it shouldn't be perceived that way because that's just simply not the case. Like, I I mean, when you're in a partnership with somebody like, yeah, well maybe she just feels like that. That's what I'm saying. Because that's the type of person she's like, yeah, that's what I mean. She's like, Like, this is my shit. Why would I, you know? Yeah. I would, I would, I would assume and I would hope that he's not telling you, I don't want to hear about this shit. You know what I mean? Um, but on the flip side of that, I do understand not wanting to like 
constantly be negative yeah and like surround yourself with negativity Mm -hmm. so it's all about balance yeah if you're feeling some type of way and you want to be able to talk about it with someone that you love and care about then that's okay but if it's like a repetitive every single day something negative and terrible is happening then i can see why maybe that person wouldn't want to be subjected to that anymore so i think it's like it's it's a real balancing act it's a give and take I think. Yeah. I think um, she talked about like, how do I take care of myself while trying to do all, take care of everyone else? Mm -hmm. Um, I think you can't take care of everyone else if you're not taking care of yourself. Exactly. You can't, you can't be at a hundred percent if you're giving, if you're giving everybody else everything. Yeah. Everything that you're, you physically have and are made of. uh, If you're constantly giving to others, it's going to start to wane on you eventually. Um, But I would say that, I mean, I guess I would say to prioritize yourself, which is kind of like stupid because you're already, yeah, it's like an obvious thing, but it could be anything. Like if you make your own, make yourself a coffee first before you start making breakfast for everybody. Yeah. Like it's like little shit like that. Like, and then you can build it. Like little moments throughout the day for you. Yeah. Yeah. But then you also have to think too, that you feeling guilty for prioritizing yourself is a patriarchal effect Mm. it's like that's them trying to make you feel like you taking care of yourself is you being selfish but they never make men feel like that they only Mm. make women feel like that (laughs) especially mothers yeah so like i don't think she's a mother but yeah she said how do i be a good mom she's in my family no she didn't say mom oh okay that's all right okay so you're not obviously if you are a mom or you're not a mom doesn't really matter um, it's not, but moms especially get that because mm-hmm. they have kids and which, moms of color. Exactly. And being a mom is the most selfless thing you could do in this world. Yeah. Right. But that doesn't mean that you got to let yourself rot internally and externally mm-hmm. to be a good mom. Yeah. Like that's not what that means. Mm-hmm. In fact, you can't be a good mom. Like you just said, it's impossible to be a great mom when you're not giving to yourself mm-hmm. too. A good partner. A good partner. Yeah. A, just a good person in yeah. general. If you're not taking care of yourself, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to take care of others the way that you would like to. Yeah. So remind yourself that taking care of yourself is not you being selfish. Those are two very different things. Yes. Um, but expecting you to give everybody everything and never take care of yourself, that's selfish mm-hmm. of whoever, if somebody is making you feel that way. So start with little things and work your way up to like... Maybe you go get your hair done like once a month or maybe you go get your nails, nails done, done yeah. every once in a while. Maybe you just do something simple at home, like do your own nails at home. Like mm. there's many different ways that self-care can manifest. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just find out what that is for you. Like even if you go sit outside <laughs> by yourself and read or something like that's something that's for you and you should make sure to in, in put it into your daily routine. And I would definitely, in regards to like overwhelming him with family issues, Yeah. sometimes when we're in spaces like that, it's so easy to absorb a lot of negativity. Yeah. I would definitely take a good look at what's being said around you. Sometimes, like especially when you're shit talking or yeah. cheese- it's, it's easy to get, to get like in, sucked to get wrapped into, up it. into yeah. it. Yeah. I and see. then be like, does this serve me to talk about it a lot? Yeah. If it's like my that's parents are sick, that's different. Yeah. But if it's like, oh my, like, cause you know, families are families. Yeah. So-and-so's cousin's girlfriend broke up with him and now she yeah, has a yeah. new baby diet or whatever. Like, and it's just constant negativity that doesn't like have anything really to do with your family. I would make sure you're looking and exactly what's happening or being said to you yeah and seeing how it affects you because if it makes you feel bad and then you're telling your husband and you feel bad you told him mm-hmm. and then it's making you feel worse then you're definitely not going to take care of yourself you know what i mean yeah that's a good point so that's a really good point that's a, <clears throat> that's kind of what i meant too yeah but it's good to elaborate on it because that's a really good point you like, know what I mean? it's really easy to get wrapped up in talking shit like because it's natural yeah. to gossip especially when it's family come yeah on. and come on gossiping is not exclusive to women like we all be talking yeah. shit it's just it is what it is but uh it's also like she said it's a good it's a good reminder to be like okay how long have i been doing this is this serving me (laughs) right um is this like something that's how long have i been doing this yeah Yeah. because it's easy to talk shit for hours like especially about people like in your family yeah so it's you know anything involving drama yeah and And all of that can be like dason said extremely draining like after a while especially to a partner like someone who may not be involved in your family as mm-hmm. much as you are 
So we, you know, everyone loves good cheese, May. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, at what cost? Yeah, <laughs> at the same time, you could keep a lid on it and make sure to not like. And like she said, it's like it's like gossipy shit. It's not like serious ailments yeah, or anything like, like if that. your grandma's sick or something. Yeah, and, like, it's not and like you're stressed that. about taking care of them. That's different. Yeah, you know. Yeah, she's just talking like drama. Yeah, like drama rama. But um, which we all have in our families. So. Yeah, I would say to make sure you prioritize yourself, whatever that looks like. Remind yourself that taking care of yourself is not selfless, yeah. selfish, right? It's selfless, actually. And last, to make sure that you're keeping a lid on how much shit you be talking. Yeah, because that can, I think yeah, just having a con- take, making a conscious effort. Yeah, because if what someone's you're like, I, I'm so tired of talking about this, you might be like, oh my god, you don't want to hear me. You don't want to listen to me. Yeah. You're and you might inter- yeah. And you might internalize that, but it could you just- might overthink it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it could just be, you know, like it's just draining to hear negativity all the time. Yeah. So just be cognizant and it's all about balance. Yeah. Yeah. Hey y'all, we're going to take a quick break so we could talk about our friends at HelloFresh and why they're so amazing. So HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant and is even cheaper than grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket, period. And the end... HelloFresh's newest menu release includes Mediterranean recipes that are filled with fresh fruits and veggies, nuts, olive oils, and fiber-packed whole grains for nourishing balance. So for us, I actually just got my HelloFresh orders the other day, and I cannot tell you how excited I was to rip those boxes open and get to cooking. Because for me, someone who's so incredibly busy, HelloFresh is ideal because not only does it come straight to my door, but all the menus are packed in there with the food, and it's these well-balanced meals that you can make very easily and it's so convenient because it gets delivered right to your door right so go to hellofresh.com slash two idiot girls 16 and use our code two idiot girls 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts so if you're interested in the convenience and extremely delicious value of HelloFresh. Make sure, once again, you go to HelloFresh.com slash 2IdiotGirl16 and use that code 2IdiotGirl16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Now, let's get back to the episode. Okay, so this one's from Keely, and she said, Sometimes I feel a sense of displacement in the Polynesian community because I can't speak Samoan fluently and I'm off classy. And so for people who don't speak Samoan, what does that mean? I uh, have someone technically like l- like phonetically or linguistically it means you're half someone it doesn't necessarily mean you're half anything else oh okay um, so you're it not just means, full, yeah it just means half. you're half someone okay um but you so you could be afghasi like and be like half hispanic you could be half black you could be half white, white. like it just depends but. okay um and she said, although I danced for Nona Sina and felt connected to the culture in that aspect, I still grew up isolated from other Polynesians in a predominantly white slash Hispanic community. Mm-hmm. Did you ever feel this way? It feels like I've had an identity crisis my whole life. Uh, when I read this to you earlier, she's like, did you write this? Because <laughs> <laughs> same girly. Yeah, I mean, we did because we didn't grow up. Well, I mean, our, we grew up with family, but like. We didn't go to school with a lot of Samoan like kids. No, it was predominantly white and Hispanic. Yeah, which, yeah, until until we went to high school, and mm-hmm. even then, like there were more Polynesian people, but there weren't a ton. Yeah, it was max. There was probably Ten. like fifteen of us. Yeah, yeah if that. If that yeah. Um, and some of them transferred out eventually. So, like, I would say at the very core of us, there's probably like eight of us. Yeah, if that, like, mm, that made it to the end. That made it all four years. No, I'd say less than eight. I'd probably say like, like five or six. Five or six. Yeah. 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 Yeah, probably like five or six. Mm-hmm. And then when I graduated, because Dason and the other someone people graduated before me. It's probably like three. It was two. Three, two, <laughs> two just yeah. two of us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we get it. Um, that was a big reason why I wanted to go to UH, like when I went to the University of Hawaii, because although I had always been connected familial mm-hmm. to my culture, I wanted to like experience it in school. Like yeah. I wanted to like hang out with other someone people and Polynesian people in yeah. general. Um, so when I went to UH, like I did that a little bit more, but Mm. it still wasn't, um, what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't as much as I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. Um, but now like being somebody who, who someone people love is like surreal. So, um, I'm not saying that's going to like, that could, that could have very well happen for Mm -hmm. you too. Um, is possible, but I get how you feel. The The feeling is very isolating. I think what I loved about the way we grew up, because 
even though we grew up with like just our family yeah our parents have always done such a good job at making us feel really close to our culture yeah and even for everyone when- who doesn't know like obviously we're someone but like my mom's off kasi my dad's full so mm-hmm. like we're like three-fourths someone yeah 75 percent. yeah <laughs> truly um so just that's just so everybody knows yeah we're someone as fuck my yeah. family yeah <laughs> like so, we're very someone that's what i'm saying like even though like we only grew up around like our cousins and we weren't around them as much as they were around each other yeah our parents have always done such a good job at making us feel really close to our culture whether that's, and always taking us to stuff too yeah whether that's yeah. like making us go to events or yeah. like um my mom like encouraged us so much in high school to do a Polynesian club. So we made one up and we yeah. would dance at all the stuff. And then yeah. like my aunt would send us dance because she's a professional dancer would send us choreography to dance. Like my parents always just tried to do different stuff like that to make to us, keep feel, us connected. Like, kind of connected and intertwined within it. Yeah. Um, I get feeling, feeling like it's especially you're not enough though. Yeah. Especially since you don't speak someone cause I don't at all. Um, um I know I very do. small words. Yeah. And I do. And then, I do like conversationally speak someone. Like when you say, como estas? Bien. Like that's true in, in someone. <laughs> yeah. Like I know more Spanish than I know someone. Como te llamas? Yeah. Yeah. But I. Me I, too. Yeah. Yeah. We all speak Spanish, <laughs> which is funny. But. um Especially when we want to make each other laugh, which is so dumb because I wish it could just be in someone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's one of my goals this year is to speak it fluently, fluently. Like, yeah. like, like frontwards and backwards, be able to like speak it and understand mm. it. Um, because I'm very minimal right now, mm-hmm. but I learned someone because I went to, when I went to college, they offered it as a language course, which I was so excited Can you about. you believe they didn't offer that at the University of Oregon? <laughs> they Seems honestly should have. They Seems honestly, odd. They honestly should have. There's a huge someone population in the PNW. There's See, I a didn't ton know of until I went to one Polynesian, like they had like a meeting mm-hmm. and I was like, where have all, where are all of you? You don't go to school here. I've never seen any of you guys. Yeah. And that's why I found out we, they had like Pacific studies um, classes that I got to take. That was like my last class before I graduated. It was so cool. Yeah. I took, uh, when I went to UH, I don't know if it's still a requirement, but it was when I went there, like they require you to take a Hawaiian studies course because obviously you're living in Hawaii so they want you to educate yourself on where you're at which yeah. I think is really yeah I respect cool. the land yeah yeah you learn a lot about like the origin of Hawaii and also yeah. like the uh the culture and why mm-hmm. it's important to be cognizant of like the land and all of that um so it's a requirement to take it I don't know if it still is but it was when I went to yeah. school so I took Hawaiian studies um and my kumu was very very educational like that dude was so he actually did olelo professionally which is pretty fucking cool what is that olelo's like the 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 singing the singing that they do yeah chanting or yeah it's like a sing and a chant it's Mm -hmm. like a mix but he did that professionally too and he was always barefoot which was also cool like walking around school yeah (laughs) he was always barefoot his Um, feet are probably like made of like leather Tru- like truly like a flintstone dude <laughs> like 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 he's just like impervious to it because he's like one with the land in That's college i took a class on pirates and uh, oh, yeah. pirates didn't wear shoes on the boats because they would slip and fall oh. so they would rub tar on the bottom of their feet to make them sticky Ew. so that's what that guy reminds me of <laughs> yeah. he was really cool though um and i learned a lot in that class and then i took like a pacific island studies course yeah. which i learned a lot in. i learned a lot more about Micronesia and Melanesia. Mm-hmm. Me too. And Polynesia. So obviously I knew yeah. a lot about Polynesia, but not nearly as much as I know now. Yeah. And then, one of the coolest ones I yeah. took in my Pacific Studies class, because it was only it was like a 201 class. Like I wish I had known about it before, so I could have taken yeah. all of them. Yeah. Um, was we learned about gender uh, identity and sexuality. Yeah. Or, in Polynesia. Uh, throughout all of Polynesia, which was really cool. Yeah, I learned about that in that class mm-hmm. too. They um and there's also a lot of like uh misinformation about oh Polynesian. my gosh yeah and it's because of colonization and yeah. also anthropologists anthropologists and yeah. like white anthropologists coming and interpreting things and then writing them down as fact and then being passed down for generations yeah like you know margaret mead yeah i was just about to bring up margaret mead Fuck that, that bitch like <laughs> someone people were literally they were so fucking funny we're being stupid like like being dumb like around each other and they're like this is just how we are yeah and she believed them and wrote it and ever in america was like studying us like 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 aliens, aliens. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like margaret mead um literally passed down this 
uh, mm -hmm. this like thing, this theory or like this, it, she, pa it wasn't past this theory. It was past this fact yeah. that like if someone, okay. So in someone culture, I've said this before, it's very matriarchal. Yeah. So we hold women in very high regard, but in that sense, also men do all the cooking and cleaning. That's a, that's a true fact. Mm -hmm. And women take care of babies and the elderly. So there, she wrote down this like Stud, and I don't know what you would call it, like anthropological research, like a report or a some report. Shit, yeah. yeah, she basically said that Samoan families, if there's no women born into the family, so they have no baby girls, mm -hmm. what they do is the youngest boy they raise as a girl, mm -hmm. and then they teach her to take care of babies and elderly, and that has been passed down for Up literal generations. Yeah, my actual teacher asked me if that was true. Who? My teacher at school. At the UH? He yeah. doesn't know if that's not true? It was a girl. And yeah. Well, she said. Was, that, she, was said, she white? No. <gasps> what was she? She was Guamanian. What? Which I also found odd. So I don't know if she was asking me for real or if she was asking me if I knew about it. Like, Yeah, because a, a white girl, or she might have been Latina. I can't remember. I went to college with her and she said, hey, I learned in my class and that the youngest boys raised to be a girl. So that's okay. My teacher was. And so she's she like, so is your up. brother going to be raised like a girl? I'm like, you use your fucking head. You don't know. Well, also, well, there's two. <laughs> even if that was true, there's two women she, already. They, we didn't, I didn't know that part. They just said, whoever, if the youngest kid is a son, this was how I was explaining See to what me. I mean? It's like the longest game of telephone. And it just like, keeps getting warped. worse. It gets yeah. warped and more and more and more. She literally asked me that. And I was like, no, that's not true. When I was like 17, like 18 at the time, I was like, use your head. Why I literally was like, true? no, that's not true. And then she goes, oh, well, maybe not now, but like back in the day. No, bitch. And I literally, I literally left class, called my dad. I, and I, and asked, I did too. And I asked my dad, I was like, hey, is like, I said, I told her no, but Tell like. Tell that Margaret Mead bitch I'm looking like, for I'm looking her. for her. Yeah. And he goes, no, that's not fucking true. And I was like, I know, because my dad was raised in someone too. So mm -hmm. like. And he only has one sister. So he goes, <laughs> do you think my youngest brother was raised like a woman? I'm all, I'm not saying that I'm telling you. Well, that's why I told him. And, and that theory upsets. It's upsetting to us for obvious reasons, because it's a misinterpretation of our culture. And, and it, I think and it's transphobic. It, I was just about to say it's transphobic. Yeah. Uh, but also like this is very common with indigenous cultures in general, but there's always um, a third gender. Gender, mm -hmm. typically within mm -hmm. it's not it's not uncommon for us to have a third gender mm -hmm. um we have one too in our culture so does hawaiian culture um native american culture yeah. right and i'm sure there's some within other polynesian no, they do. Polynesian yeah. cultures i was just saying tongan they do too. yeah see yeah. so like we all have a third gender so gender and sexuality is understood in our culture much differently than it is in Western civilization yeah. for obvious reasons before we all got colonized. Right. Yeah. So before a religion, yeah. Yeah, before Mormonism, yeah, yeah. Before all of that came um, and really fucked our like ideology of gender yeah. and sexuality. Like we also have that as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, learning more about our culture through that, even though I already, I knew that, but it was giving me a much more nuanced understanding of yeah. it. Um, and it was understanding it, not from a homophobic lens yeah, because that's how we learn it through Western <laughs> civilization. Yeah. It's like through homophobia yeah. or transphobia. All right. We're going to take a quick break from this week's episode and talk to you about our sponsor and our friends, Bud Light Seltzers. So we are so very excited for summer this year, and we're really excited, especially because we get to try Bud Light Seltzers loudest flavors ever. They are all about bold flavor, variety and fun with their Bud Light Seltzer hard soda pack, Bud Light Seltzer retro tie dye pack and new flavors, tangerine and watermelon in their classic variety pack. These are the perfect seltzers to enjoy with friends all summer long. Each can in the variety packs have zero sugar, 5% ABV, 100 calories, gluten-free, and are naturally flavored. So as you can see up here, we have the hard soda pack and we have their variety pack on the bottom. And we are very excited to try both of them, specifically in the hard soda variety pack. Our favorite flavor that we're very excited to try is going to have to be classic cola. I'm a cola girly myself. Diet Coke, but still. It's and a cola. It's a cola, regardless. And whatever your favorite cola is, this Bud Light Seltzer tastes like that one with zero sugar. Trust us, this is the new cola you're going to want to try. And in the Bud Light Classic Variety Pack, which we have down here... Um, we're really excited to try the mango flavor, that tropical mango flavor you always crave. It is the perfect combination of sweet citrus and tart that will revive your taste buds. And Dason, 
She loves a good mango. I tell you what. I'll tell you I what. I love a good mango. She loves a good mango. I've actually had the mango one. It's really good. The mango one? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited it's to really try good. it. Yeah. I love mango. Honestly, I love mango flavored stuff too. So to find a retailer who delivers right to your door, head over to BudLight.com to learn more. Bud Light Seltzer, the loudest flavors ever. Enjoy responsibly messaging for 21 and over. Now back to the episode. So but, back to this girl's question. But yeah, yeah, we went off on the rails a little bit, but you get what I'm saying. Every episode, I'm going to talk about how much I fucking hate Margaret Mead. No, <laughs> that's why, like, she, I can't remember what else they did. Like our people, like our ancestors or whoever was there that she was studying. Yeah, she just like. But true. they were doing like, they were like doing stuff like literally to like trick her. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so that was like one of them. The things that that's like, for whatever reason, the biggest theory that came out of her research on yeah, someone people, it was. and people believed it, but they literally told other anthropologists, like we're literally just fucking with, they're just being funny. And listen, at the end of the day, I'm someone's here for a good joke. They're going to tell you a joke. I'll tell you that <laughs> they're going to commit to a I'm bit here for a bit. Listen, everyone, everyone who's Polynesian and meets me in real life, they literally are like, bitch. Like they, I make them laugh because that's just how we are. Like, yeah. like big goofy energy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like if you know any, any Polynesian person, like they're always laughing and they're always making jokes. Yeah. Like, like at the end of the day, they're, they're going to tell you a joke. I'll tell you that much. Sure. But that's you. That warps their fuck. <laughs> that warps our fucking cultural history. <laughs> that written in, in the yeah. history books. I'll tell you something else about someone's. They'll be petty till the day they die. I bro. know. They're like, literally we're just fucking with her. I'll, t- I'll tell you what. They'll hold a grudge. That's what a song one person will do. They will hold a grudge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me against Margaret Mead. <laughs> Tell that bitch I'm looking for. Truly. But anyways, how do you feel connected to your culture? So I see that you did Nona Cena. We wanted to do dance so much growing yeah. up. But we were too busy. Yeah. So then we literally, did, we just did it at school, like I said. I wanted to so badly though. But I think a big portion of that also was wanting to be closer to culture. Like, yeah. I, I understand completely that like desire yeah that, there's that, like a disconnect almost like yeah. you like you're trying to fill yeah that like gravitational <laughs> pull especially if when you go see family and they all go to the same school as each other yeah. and they all like they all spend every day they together go to church together they all live yeah, by each other exactly yeah. like we never had that um we never lived close mm-hmm. to our family like we always had to commute to go see them which yeah. we did very often but um it wasn't the same as like living next door to them like yeah. some of our family and our san diego family shout yeah, out uh, they all live like down the street from each other I which i we grew up with them too because we would but even though we lived an hour away yeah we would drive every out weekend to go see them yeah we would go out to see them and we like grew up together in that sense, but it wasn't the same as like them growing up together next door to each other, yeah. going to school together, I doing mean, sports the, together. The someone population in San Diego is like out yeah, of control. Unreal. You know? So like we totally understand feeling like far away. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but like how do you stay closer to it? Like there's so much stuff online. I'm not even joking. Like a different like like an account I follow called Empowered PI or something like that. Mm-hmm. They post plenty of different like is it Talanoa? How do you say that? Is that how you say it? T A L A N O A. Yeah, it's, it's Talanoa. Is that like, someone or Talanoa? I don't I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, they post like they host like different like seminars and stuff with different like Polynesian leaders yeah. that like talk about different things. Like I've been to a couple of different queer ones. I've diff- been to ones for different trans people and stuff like that. Yeah. So they have different themed ones of people who look like us that are trying to do the same thing. And then there's people like you who are looking for stuff like that. So you can be yeah. connecting with others. I, you know I, I mean? totally get that though. Cause someone asked me, um, if it's nice to be with someone else who's someone. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, because, <laughs> There's just like it, there's just something about it. Like they just understand, you know what I mean? Like there are certain parts of Samoan culture that you won't get unless you're a part of it. Yeah. And like, here's like a perfect example. Uh, We are any Samoan child, like I'm only speaking on behalf of Samoans, but I'm sure it applies to like Polynesian people. Samoan children are very um, giving or very. I guess, responsive to parents, right? We respect elders like through and through. Yeah. So like anything our family needs, we're going to do. Like mm-hmm. if they need it, if they need me to do it, I'm going to go do it. Like yeah. it doesn't matter if if it's far, if it's inconvenient, it really doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to do it. And that's what a lot of Polynesian kids do, specifically Samoan kids. Yeah. So that understanding is something that's so like, 
I don't know. It's it's like almost. I don't want to say it's exclusive to someone families, but like it's something that's so strong. Like yeah, like I don't even think I wasn't even thinking you were gonna say that, but because that's just how we are. Yeah, like, like it's I don't it's know how just to like I can't. It. It's yeah. so hard to describe. But all my someone like friends will understand what I'm talking about. Like even if <laughs> even if you don't want to do it. You're gonna do it because yeah. they asked you to do it. Even when you get older. So yeah, I'm 28. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And my mom's like, we're going to so and so's house next Friday, and I go, okay, put it on my I it, put it I'm, on my calendar. I'm telling, I'm telling you, like, I'll be there. Like saying, like, no, I don't want to. That's not that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist in our house. Like, like it, it truly doesn't. Like you're, you're literally like, okay. Like it, and it's not even like a because you know you have to. It's because you want. It's like I want to. You want to. That's why. That's why I'm saying it's hard to explain because it sounds like it sounds like you're being told what to do, which you are to an extent. Mm -hmm. But it's something that you want to do because you know it's going to make them happy and you want to be a part of it because it's family. Yeah. So you're like, okay, yeah, like no, yeah, that sounds fun. I want to mm -hmm. go. I'm t I'm telling you, like someone. I know. Are, now that you're explaining it, it doesn't. That's the real Mandela effect. Right? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't like, make. There's no explanation there's for truly, it. There's truly no. Like it's so hard to describe. Like when I describe it. I I used to describe this to my white friends, right? I think it's just because we're born with such a deeply ingrained amount of respect and love for our families. Yeah. It's like, like I'm born like that. Like I wasn't, like I was raised with it. Yeah. But my mom didn't sit me down and say, hey, every time I tell you to do something, we're going to, like, it was just always in my brain that yeah. that's what we're doing. The closeness yeah. is something that I'm like, is it it's all part of it like yeah. like feeling so like the gravitational pull your family has like that's why a lot of Samoan kids even like any other Polynesian kids can't move away from their families like, like <laughs> I'm one of them yeah, yeah like you know like <laughs> the same same yeah. that's why I said like if you know someone person like you know how like they make that joke like if you marry some person you marry their whole family yeah yeah it's true like yeah. it's a as it's the truest thing ever like you're literally marrying the whole thing because they can't be away from their family. And it's just because that's how much love we have for each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, when I did my story on Tua, mm -hmm. like, his whole family had to move with him. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he wasn't going to perform good because he needs them. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, there's something wrong that's with that. That's literally you. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, too. I know. No, but I'm thinking like, how you're going to Vegas and you're oh like. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm dying. Dude, just let me come and I'll sleep on the ground. That's like, why I was like, I'm literally going to die with <laughs> family dude but that that's but that's my point like it's just like the support system is so um ingrained in yeah, us yeah, yeah, yeah. that that's why we um sometimes like our parents have to like push us to go do new things because yeah. we're like nah it's cool i'll just stay here with you guys like we do the whole time nah it's okay i'll just stay here with you guys mm -hmm. but they're like no go outside and go make other fucking friends like yeah, go go make yeah, other friends yeah. leave us alone our parents. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Like someone kids live at home for a long time. Someone kids sometimes get married and have kids and still live at home. Yeah, like, multi generational housing is yeah, very common. Yeah, and that's common. a minority thing. I yeah, think. for sure. It's not just that's not exclusive to us. But like, anyways, my point in saying that is that if you stay close to your family, like if whoever your parent is, that's someone. Talk to them, like ask them to learn more about your culture. Yeah, yeah like both our parents are Samoan. Yeah, but my dad lived in Samoa for a really long time. Yeah, so he has obviously a different experience from my mom. Yeah. But I love asking him story. Like he tells us the most insane things about <laughs> someone. Someone, someone people are crazy, man. <laughs> like they're fucking crazy. But even stuff like, um, like when I got my tattoo, like yeah. I felt very close to my culture. Like, Oh, that's stuff, cool. Yeah. I know I've been wanting to get one. Yeah. That's why like all my tattoos that I'm going to get as past this one are all going to be tribal because the, that makes me feel close to you my culture. You don't want white girl tattoos? No. I'm trying to get a couple of white girl tattoos. I'm excited. I don't want, we, what about, about me makes you think that I want a Michael <laughs> tattoo, dude. Like nothing about. That's why, like all my all my tattoos, I want them to be someone specific or mm -hmm. tied to someone culture because that just makes me feel good. Yeah. So like our tattoo artist is someone to like af someone is fuck. Shout out Bodie, right? Mm -hmm. Bodie. But um, you know, like stuff like that makes me feel close to my culture. It's all it's all dependent on you. But I get I get the isolation and seeking seeking like the community refuge almost, and yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get that. But you can follow other creators like Crit is someone that is a wonderful yeah, Christian Schmidt or something like that. Yeah. It's like what would Crit do? K R I T. Yeah. Um but he's so funny. We love him. Yeah. And he's someone too. Yeah. Um obviously and queer. obviously we're both someone yeah. creators. Yeah, right. you should be following us, Keely. <laughs> Who else? Dinah Tui. Oh Dina, yeah. Yeah, Dina, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dina Tui. Is yeah. it Tui Ayana or something? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's also one. There's you should seek out other Polynesian creators, like ones that either talk about culture oh, or maybe and, um, just talking about Stanson. Is that his name? 
Yeah. yeah. All four. Yeah. Yeah. He's Stance really and, cute. Stance and all four is a great one to follow too because he's very much so, he operates within both worlds. Because right? he's off Cassie too. Yeah. Right? yeah. So he operates within both worlds, like Western civilization, obviously, and then obviously being someone. So mm-hmm. um, those follow some creators. Like now with the internet, you could like seek community on there. Mm-hmm. Like it always helps me. I, I totally get that feeling though. Yeah. It sucks uh, feeling like that. But it's not going to last forever. I, I, I'm I assuming you're younger than us. I think so. I'm because sure. I, I felt like that aggressively when I was younger, yeah. especially when in my teens, like when I was like 16, 17, I was like, I was searching so desperately mm-hmm. for like, uh, I just, I don't know what it, what it was because I, I had family. I had my immediate it's family. It's like a sense of family. community, you know? Like Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know why I was like searching for more and more and more. But I think it's just because I was getting older. So I wanted to learn more about my culture. But like going to school and taking classes, that's why we talked yeah. about that. Like, well, I think it's too when you're young, you don't really know who you are yet. Yeah, exactly. So then you're like, oh, and I'm not even someone enough. Yeah. I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, you know? the, so. I, well, that's why I think she mentioned an identity crisis. Yeah, exactly. Right? So like, I, I feel that. But like, you know, that's those are all just ways that you can see culture, yeah, cultural refuge, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You can find other people to relate to. You could talk to them, hopefully, learn or just watch from, them. Yeah, yeah, learn from them, take classes. Yeah, there's books you could read. That- yeah, like me and Billy are uh, making it our goal to buy it before the end of this year that we're gonna learn someone fluently. Mm-hmm. Mostly so we can talk shit in public. That's my dream. So, yeah, I'm, so I'm on that train right yeah, there. We do do that with the very little someone that we do speak. Yeah. But we're trying to learn more. So I know. Um, or we use Espanol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or we use Spanish. But uh, no one's going to believe that me and Billy are Spanish. <laughs> so um, that's like, uh, that's another way too that you can feel very close is to learn someone. It's, it's kind of hard, but I know they offer some classes online, but they also... Uh, say that it's a lot easier to speak someone when you're talking to someone who can speak it. Oh, okay. So our dad can speak someone fluently. Mm-hmm. So he told us like as soon as as soon as we start learning, he'll start talking to us and someone. Mm-hmm. That's the easiest way to learn is to cool. speak with someone. So those are our tips. Is a little long winded, but you know. I know. Thank you, Keely, for sending in that question because that's super vulnerable and, and like definitely a very specific experience. Yeah, that we have lived. We feel you. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Especially if they're growing up in a predominantly white Hispanic community. Mm-hmm. That's what you said. Did you write this one in days? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yeesh. Thank you for listening. Um, you can find this podcast anywhere that you listen to podcasts. You can watch the video version on our YouTube channel at Two Idiot Girls. Um, and please look out for our next question that we're going to be sending out to y'all on celebrity hot takes. Yes. But other than that, I hope Yeesh. you all have a... <laughs> I got to get it in there. I didn't say it once this episode. (laughs) I hope you all have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.